Let's begin. Let's sit up on your lift, cross your legs in the center of your shins. I'll also add, we were talking about Shavasana before. You want to find an essence of Shavasana in every pose that you do. Right, poses. There are two parts of, of the pose. There's the effort and there's the non-attachment. So the effort is you know, working to get yourself into that form. And the non-attachment is not being attached to whether people always ask, is this right? Being unattached to, is it right? Does it look the way it does in the book? And opening yourself to the experience that you're having right now, which of course is the essence of Shavasana, non-attachment. So as we go through the poses, can you think or feel, where is the Shavasana in this pose? For each and every pose. Bounce evenly on the sit bones. Release the inner thighs, compact the outer hips. Move the front bottom ribs towards the back body as you lengthen through the side ribs. Release the shoulders away from the sides of your neck as you lengthen from the inner armpits to the inner elbows. Rescan the body. Are you still balanced evenly on the sit bones? Are you still lengthening the inner thighs, the inner legs? Are you still compacting the outer hips? Are you still lengthening through the side ribs, releasing the shoulders? Keep the elbows releasing down, bring the palms together at the chest. Close your eyes from top to bottom, rest your eyes to your cheekbones, gaze at your heart. See that your palms touch evenly left to right, right to left. There is work to sit upright in this fashion. If you just let go, you collapse. And can you note, perhaps experience, where there is Shivasana alongside the effort, where there is non-attachment alongside the effort in this pose? And let's chant the syllable along three times together, exhaling completely, deep inhalation. Oh. Lifting your sternum towards the ceiling, lower your chin towards your heart. The 
Release your hands onto your thighs with your palms up. With your eyes closed, raise your head. Gently let your eyelids open. Straighten your legs. Press your thigh bones down. Not the knees, but the thigh bones. It is a straight leg. I'm not saying bend the knees. And ensure that the legs are straight. I just look at my legs and realize they were off to the side a little bit. So I have to double check. Are they really straight? Press the thigh bones down. Fingertips by your hips. Lengthen through the inner thighs. From the inner thigh up through the inner knee, through the inner heel, and from the upper inner thighs back towards the abdomen. Just send the flesh of the inner thighs, draw from the outer knees to the outer hips, compact the hips together. Keep the front bottom ribs towards the back body, lengthen through your side ribs. Soften the shoulders. The side ribs lengthen as the shoulders release. There's a, a lifting of the flesh of the front of the body. So the front of the body, the flesh lifts upward. It goes over the top of the shoulders and down the back. And there is work to sit in this fashion. The abdomen has to work to be here. <coughs> Legs are working. Can you find your Shavasana in this pose? It doesn't mean give up the work, right? So it's not, okay, I'm gonna give up the work so I can let go. It's both. It's a maintaining the work and a letting go. It's a maintaining the work and accepting what is here right now without fighting it. Separate your legs. Make sure they're even. Make sure your, your, your heels are on the same plane. You know, sometimes it needs a little bit of adjustment. Press the thigh bones down. You can decide the, the height of your lift. If you want to be on the floor here, that's fine. Or, or a lesser lift. Sometimes a lesser lift is 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 good, it, it depends on your body. Then, you know, look, if you're not sure, I was reading some, uh, some of what BKS Anger, some of his writings this morning, and, and he spoke about, this has to be an experimentation, but an, an experimentation within you. What happens if I do this? What happens if I do that? What happens if I move this? What happens if I move that? What if I turn this muscle on? What if I turn that muscle on? What if I use this prop? What if I use that prop or don't use a prop? And really the beauty of, of this whole time that, that we've had is this, this opportunity to really experiment because we're, we, we had to we had to get unstuck from the regular that we knew and always just doing as we're told and we had access to any prop that we wanted any time and all of that so now we have to play an experiment with something different and that's really a beauty of this time to be able to experiment press the thighs down lengthen the inner legs from the inner thighs out to the inner knees, through the inner ankles, push through the balls of the big toes, the flesh of the inner thighs descending. Remember from the upper inner thighs back to the abdomen as well, and the outer knees to the outer hips. Lift up through the side ribs. Keep the front bottom ribs moving towards the back body. The upper arms rotate out. That makes space for the side ribs to lengthen more.
we're going to turn here, we're going to twist here. So take your left hand between your legs, right hand outside of your legs. And it, you know, if you can't reach, then take a block or something. Lift up through the side ribs, inhale. Now rotate the ribs around, R rotate. So your navel is in line with that right leg or getting towards it if not in line. If I really drew a line, I'm not really in line with it. But that's where the body is seeking. And I could continue and fight with it and force it and demand from it. Or I can find an optimal place for it, continue the work, don't give up the work, continue the work, and then go, where is there Shavasana in this pose in this experience? Maintain that lift on your exhalation, come to center. Be in the center. Notice how just turn to one side. The sides feel very different right now. Even the legs feel different now. Right hand on the inside, left hand on the outside. Lift, inhale, wrap the ribs around and turn. And as you turn, maintain the effort and find your Shavasana. And can you experiment with having both, with playing with both? And maybe you just get it for a glimpse. And then the work takes over. Or you're seeking the Shavasana and you give up on the work. You get a glimpse of it and then reestablish yourself, re-seek it. Maintain the lift, exhale, come to center. <clears throat> so I spoke about experimenting, trying different ways. We have this idea that there's a right and wrong in all of this. And, and there, might, there are some, I'm not saying that there's no wrong way to do a yoga pose there, there is. But there are many right ways. So take your left hand on the inside, take your right hand on the outside. Before I said, turn at your ribs, I want you to turn your abdomen, rotate your abdomen, rotate your abdomen until your navel points towards that leg. Have your abdomen turn the rest of the body. Notice how focusing on the abdomen, notice what happens to the rest of the body as you do, do so. The other parts are still following. And find your Shavasana. Exhale, come to center, maintain that lift. The other side, rotate at the abdomen, not the ribs. And experiment and notice the difference. Study. Svadhyaya, study. Roll the upper arms out to relax your shoulders. Maintain the lift, exhale, come to center. One more time, this time we're gonna turn, turn at the shoulders. Right, left hand in, right, right hand out. Rotate the shoulders and see what happens. It's a different pose for me. And then find your Shavasana. Are you still extending through the legs? Especially the leg away from the side you're turning to. So you turn to the right, extend through the left leg. Right, so come to center, rotate at the shoulders and see how the rest of the body responds to it. Maintain the effort, maintain the work and find your Shavasana.
You're extending through the legs. <clears throat> Exhale, come to center. Hands on the inside of the knees. Lift straight up. Bring the feet together. Hands by your hips. Press your heels. Lengthen the inner thighs. Draw the outer knees to the outer hips. Keep those front bottom ribs moving towards the back body. Yeah, you might, some people are adjusting their lift here. You might have to adjust your lift at home. Adjust your lift. Up, down. Experiment. Take your left hand over, right hand behind you. Just take it on the outside of your ankle. Sometimes you do it with the strap and that's fine, but you can also just take, take it on the outside of your ankle. Inhale, lift in, exhale, turning. Rotate at the abdomen. We'll start, we'll, we'll go down and then up. Rotate the abdomen first. Press the heels, release the inner thighs. Drop the shoulders down. Bending that front elbow helps with the turn. So bend the front elbow. Then do the work and find your Shavasana. Extend through the inner leg of the opposite way you're turning. So we're turning to the right, extend through that left inner leg. Draw the left outer knee to the outer hip. Because that left leg may tend to follow you as you turn to the right. Maintain that lift. Exhale, come to center. Other side, rotate at the abdomen, bend that elbow. Press the heels, lengthen the inner thighs, rotate at the abdomen. Lengthen through the inner thigh of the opposite leg. Move that knee away from you. As you turn to the, the left, move the right knee towards the right. center. One more time. Left leg, left hand over, right hand behind you. Inhale, lifting. Exhale. Bend that front elbow to turn. Rotate the ribs this time. Ribs rotate. Is it different? Is it different for you if you rotate at the abdomen or rotate at the ribs? And if it's if it is, notice what's different. If it's not, practice it again later on today or during the week and begin to study. Exhale, come to center, other side. Rotate the ribs, ribs, ribs wrap around. Bend that front elbow to help you. Wrap those ribs around. Press the heels, lengthen the inner thighs, back the hips. Find your Shavasana. Can you do the work and find your Shavasana? Exhale, come to center. One more time. Left hand over, right hand behind you. Inhale, lift up first. Lift and lengthen, then bend that front elbow and turn without collapsing. Rotate the shoulders and really bring that left shoulder blade into the body. Extend the left knee away from you and bring the left shoulder blade into the body and use that left shoulder blade to help you turn. And study, is it different for you? Shoulders down. 
And it's not, is it better or worse? Do I like it better? Do I like this version, that version? But can you begin to study? And can you find your Shavasana within the study, within the work, within the study, a non-attachment? And exhale, come to center, other side. Move from the shoulders and then bring that lift first, exhale, turn, bring that right shoulder blade in. Use that right shoulder blade really in and up to help that turn. Lengthen the inner thighs, compact the hips, especially that, that uh, right leg, that right knee moving away from you as you turn to the left. Find your Shavasana. Maintain that lift, exhale, come to center. Hands by your hips. Hands on the outside of your knees, push your legs together. Hands behind one leg, draw the flesh towards the buttock, drag the heel. Other leg, draw the flesh towards the buttock, drag the heel, straighten the leg, fingertips by your hips. Take hold behind your left, left knee, draw it in. Take hold of your ankle, place your heel, place it down. You might need to play with your lift again. Some of you that went down to the floor are going to be happier here with a higher lift. So you can check it out for yourself. You can experiment, experiment now, experiment later. Keep the, this right leg is straight. Keep that lengthening. This is this, this right, we forget about this leg. This leg is a part of the pose. That means thigh down, lengthen the inner thigh out through the inner heel, back towards the abdomen and draw the outer knee to the outer hip. Hands around your shin, lift your chest. Take your right hand behind you, extend your left arm up, reach up. Now sit your left buttock down, reach up with your left arm and then begin to turn and bend your elbow inside of your knee, and lift your chest. Inhale, lifting, exhale, turn. Keep that right thigh turned in. Use that straight leg. Extend the, the straight leg, draw the outer knee to the outer hip. Inhale, lifting, exhale, turn. Bring that left shoulder blade into the body. Ruchyasana one. Maintain the lift, inhale, exhale, turn to center. Take your hands around your shin, lift the chest again. Take your hands behind the knee. Draw the flesh towards the buttocks, drag the heel, straighten the leg, Dandasana. Then hold behind the, the uh, right leg, lift it up. Take hold of the ankle, place the heel uh, comfortably close to the sit bone. If it gets right up there, great, but optimally, don't, don't hurt yourself trying to yank it in, right? If, it, if optimal is a couple inches away, then it's a couple inches away. If, if you have the, the flexibility that draws in, it draws in, that's fine. Keep that straight leg working. So the kneecap straight up, lengthen the inner thigh in both directions, descend the flesh of the inner thigh, draw the outer knee to the outer hip. Maintain that, lift up through the side ribs, take your right, left, left hand behind you, extend the right arm up, but get, before you turn, get the length. That means right sit bone down, right arm up. Reach, lengthen, inhale, exhale, turn and bend the elbow and then lift the chest again. Sometimes you have to lean forward to get that elbow in, but then you have to lift up again. Notice the right leg, did you lose it? Lengthen through the right leg, outer knee to outer hip. Inhale, lifting, exhale, turning. Bring that right shoulder blade into the body. That bent leg, sit, stand into the inner foot. So press through the inner foot of the bent leg and find your Shavasana. It doesn't mean no work, but within the work, where is Shavasana? 
Maintain that lift. Exhale, come to center. Hands around your shin. Lift. Hands behind your knee. Draw the flesh towards the buttocks. Straighten the leg. Take the left leg in. Lift up. Take hold of the ankle. Draw it in. Hands around the shin. Lift up. You're going to lean forward. Reach forward and hook your elbow around your shin. Some, some people will not be able to get the elbow around, in which case you take your hand around. So, so the, the right arm, right arm, Sean, that's it. Reach forward and either hook the elbow or hook the hand, whatever gets there. And then you take your left hand behind you. Lift, turn. You can actually take the left hand, take hold of your belly button and move that belly button on the other side of the thigh. Now the right leg, the straight leg often falls out here. So still work, extend the inner leg, draw the outer knee to the outer hip. Inhale, lifting, exhale, turning, draw the thigh into your body as you turn your torso. And find your Shavasana. Drop the shoulders, release your shoulders. Exhale, come to center. Hands around your shin. Lift. Don't lose the lift. No collapsing. Hands behind the knee. Draw the flesh towards the buttocks. Straighten the leg. Other side. Draw it in. Take hold of the ankle. Place it down. Establish the straight leg first. Extend the inner leg. Outer knee to outer hip. The flesh is still descending. Now lift first because you don't want to collapse and lean in. So lift first. Then lean in. Chest still lifted so that you can hook the elbow. And then take your hand, take your belly button on the other side of the side. Don't let the left leg fall out and then take your hand behind you. Lifting, inhale, lifting, exhale, turning. As you turn, you're drawing your thigh towards you. Drop the shoulders. Straight leg working, lengthening, outer knee to outer hip, thigh pressing down. Find your Shavasana. There's a lot of work here. Can you find your Shavasana in this pose? Pressing into the inner foot of that bent leg, but sitting into that sit bone of that bent leg, sit bone, to the right sit bone. Maintain the lift, inhale, exhale, come to center, hands around the shin. Draw the flesh towards the buttocks, behind the heel, behind the knee, excuse me. Dandasana. Hands by your hips, check in with yourself. It's not the first time we've been in Dandasana, but for many of us, this is going to feel quite different after that whole series of, of twists. And release, come to standing. Take two blocks to the right side of your mat. And let's see, how do I want to do this? All right, just step, start with your feet apart. Turn your left foot in, turn your right leg out. You want to square yourself towards the side wall. So lift up, lift up your back heel and see if you can square your hips and then take your back heel down. Lift the outer knees to the outer hips, but lengthen those inner thighs. So from the inner knees of both legs, lengthen all the way up to the abdomen. Now keep your hands on your hips, at least the first time we do it. I'm gonna play with this one maybe. Now, Earlier in the class, I spoke about the, the flesh moving up the front of the body and down the back. Can you have the experience that the, the flesh of the front of your torso is moving up and the flesh of the back of the torso is moving down? We're doing partial tunasana. Inhale, exhale, press the back heel and extend your chest towards the side of the room. Keep those hips squared and then take your fingertips on the block. So we have a concave back here. So take your shoulder blades into the body. So fingertips on the blocks, take your shoulder blades into the body and there's a lengthening front, keep that front leg as straight as you're able. 
lengthen from your pubic bone to your navel, from your navel to your sternum, and from your sternum to your collarbone. And let the energy roll over your shoulders. Take those shoulder blades into the body and down your back. The eyes begin to look forward. You don't have to do it from the neck, though. The eyes look forward because those side ribs are extending so far forward. The chest is extending so far forward that the head just begins to look up. You will get more extension in the side ribs and in the chest if you lengthen the groins, if you draw those groins into the body. And then take your hands on your hips, press the back heel, inhale, come up, point your chest towards the ceiling. And come to center, parallel the feet, watch those blocks. And then you have to take those blocks to the other side. Right foot and left leg out. Pick up the back heel, square the hips. And then place that back heel down. That back thigh has to turn in, really lengthen those groins. You're going to get more extension if you lengthen the groin. Lift the outer knees to the outer hips and compact the hips together. Partial Tanasana, side forward bend or really side intense pose. So get that idea that the flesh is moving up the front of the spine, right? So we spoke about lengthening from the pubic bone to the navel, navel to the sternum, sternum to collarbone. Do that here. The flesh then goes down your back. Inhale, exhale, take the chest across the room, across the room. And then when your torso is parallel to the floor, fingertips on the blocks. The blocks should be underneath the shoulders right now. The upper arms do rotate out. That creates more space for the side. Ribs keep pressing the back heel, keep lifting the outer knees to the outer hips, but also lengthen those groins. And then extend pubic bone to navel, navel to sternum, sternum to collarbone, the flesh at the front of the body also moving in that direction. And the energy rolls over the shoulders, take the shoulder blades into the body and down your back, the flesh of the back moving down. Find your Shavasana. Take your hands on your hips. Extend the chest forward, inhale, come up, lift the chest, and come to center, parallel your feet, step your feet together. Tadasana. Take the box to the other side. Separate your feet. Left foot in, right leg out. Pick up the back heel, square those hips, place the back heel down. Draw the outer knees to the outer hips, compact the hips, lengthen the inner thighs. Now, interlock your thumbs together and extend your arms up first, straight up. Compact the hips together, press the back heel. So the flesh of the front of the body moves up, the flesh of the back body moves down. Exhale, take the torso forward. So. It's not just your arms pulling your chest, but can your chest, can your side ribs actually extend the arms further forward? Keep extending forward, forward, and then even pull with your arms, yes, forward, and then let your arms come onto the blocks. Take those shoulder blades into the body, compact the hips, lengthen the corners. Rotate the upper arms out and seek to get your side ribs past your armpits. I know they don't really go there, but seek the side ribs past the armpits. Lengthen the front of the spine, pubic bone to navel, navel to sternum, sternum to collarbone. The energy rolls over your shoulders. Take your shoulder blades into the body. Now keep the hips compacted. Draw the outer knees to the outer hips. Inhale, we're coming down now. Exhale, bend the elbows out to the side. Take your navel down first, then your chest, then let your head go. Maybe you need to lower the blocks now. Keep lifting, especially the front leg, but both legs, outer knees to outer hips. Lengthen the groins, inner knees, deep up into the abdomen. 
And on each exhalation, take your chest towards your big toe, front big toe. And find your Shavasana here. And straighten the arms. Look up, concave back again. Maybe you need to raise the blocks again. Extending the front of the torso. Flesh to the front of the torso, moving forward. Back to torso, moving towards your waist. Then hands on your hips. Extend the chest forward. Inhale, come up. Chest towards the ceiling. And come into center. Parallel the feet. Take the blocks to the other side. And we'll go to the other side, right foot and left leg out. Pick up the back heel, place that heel down. Now interlock your thumbs the opposite way. Square those hips and interlock thumbs, your thumbs the opposite way and extend the arms up. Square those hips, compact the hips, lengthen the groins. Compact the hips, lengthen the groins. Inhale, exhale, reach forward. Draw the outer knees to the outer hips strongly. Use the chest to push the arms forward. Use the side ribs to lengthen through the arms. And then, yes, pull with the arms and then take the fingertips onto the block. Lift the outer knees to the outer hips. Take those shoulder blades into the body. Lift the outer knees to the outer hips. Lengthen the groins. Lengthen now the front of the spine. Lengthen from your pubic bone to your navel, from your navel to your sternum, from your sternum to your collarbone. The flesh of the torso moving up. Don't sink in the lower back so much, uh, uh, Leanne. So front bottom is towards the back body, shoulder blades in, not just the lower back. Shoulder blades into the body, they move down towards your waist, the flesh of your back moving down. And then maintaining that, really draw the outer knees to the outer hips, compact those hips, and then on your exhalation, Take those, bend the elbows out to the sides. Maybe you need to lower the blocks. Lift the outer knees to the outer hips. The navel comes down first, then the chest, then let the head go completely. But the goal is not just to get your head to your shin. Can you take your chest closer to the, your front big toe as you're lifting the outer knees to the outer hips, as you're lengthening those groins? Each exhalation, your chest moving closer to your big toe. And finding your Shavasana now in this pose. Finding your Shavasana in this pose. And if you're cursing your hamstring, please say something kind to it. Something loving to it. Straighten your arms, look up. Concave back again, so bring those shoulder blades in. Maybe you need to raise your blocks if you lowered them. And then hands on hips, extend the chest forward. Inhale, come up. Lift your chest towards the ceiling and then come to center. Then parallel your feet and step your feet together. Tadasana. Well, that was nice, we haven't done that pose in a while. All right, take one block on either side. You can go to, towards the front of your mat. So fingertips up, bend your legs. Jumper, step your feet apart. Drop the shoulders. And let's do the first time, let's do hands on hips. Let's see where we go the second time. Left foot and right leg out. We're doing Parvita Trikonasana, it's a twist. Pick up the back heel, square the hips, take the back heel down. So still draw the outer knees to the outer hips, still lengthen the inner groin. Take this block and put it on the instep of your foot, the block that's near your front foot. And then extend your left arm up, left arm up, reach up, press the back heel, reach the left arm up. So you're making as much length as you can. Now keep pressing the back heel, that front leg especially, but both legs, lift the outer knees to the outer hips as you come forward. Compact those hips as you come forward. The chest pushes the arm, the side is push the arm, and then the arm does pull. 
and then take that arm down onto the block. Keep that right hip moving back. Inhale, extend the torso, and then exhale, turn over your front leg. Turn, turn towards the front leg, like this, Leanne, right? So you're opposite me, Leanne. That's it. Lift the outer knee to the outer hip, though. Don't just jam, jam that shin bone down, Leanne. So lift both outer knees to outer hips, compact the hips, lengthen the groins. And turn the abdomen, turn the abdomen to turn the torso. Turn the abdomen to turn the torso. If you have balance, yes, you can extend your, your arm up. And then take your hand on your hip. Now balance is in your back heel and that hand that's on the block. Press into your back heel, that hand that's on the block, swing it up and out. And then that block might be in your way, just parallel your feet. Hands on hips for a second, take a breath. How'd that work out? Make sense? All right, other side. So right foot in, left leg out. Pick up that back heel. Square those hips, place the heel down and whoop, get that block inside that foot. Lift the outer knees to the outer hips, compact the hips, lengthen the inner groins, really lengthen those. The more length you have in the inner groins, the more you can come, the more space there is to come forward and for the turn. Now extend that right arm up. So press into the back heel, reach that right arm up. Get as much length as you can. Press into the back heel. Now lift the outer knees to the outer hips. Compact those hips. Release the groins as you come forward. Compact this. Release the groins as you come forward. Use your side hips to extend the chest and arm forward. Hold the arm and then take the hand onto those blocks. Compact the hips together. Release and lengthen those groins. Inhale, extend the spine. Exhale, turn over your front. Turn. Rotate. Turn your abdomen to turn the rest of your torso. Turn your abdomen to turn the rest of your torso. Keep that left hip moving back so the spine stays lengthened. Of course, yes, you can extend the arm up if you want. The arms up, really extend those arms away from each other. And then left hand on your hip. Again, so the back heel and the hand that's on the block, press into the back heel, use that hand on the block, swing yourself up and out, parallel your feet, and step your feet together. And Ramon, I think you'll be happier with legs wider apart if it's excessive. Tadasana, check in with yourself. Make sure the blocks aren't in your way. Jump or step your feet apart. All right, we're gonna stick with hands on, on hips to, to get in. There, there are different ways to get in, but I think that one's working for today. So left foot and right leg up, pick up your back heel, turn, place your back heel down. Take that block on your instep. If you, the final pose is your hand is on the floor on the outside of your foot. So you can play with it. If you're doing really well and, and you wanna go deeper, you lower the block and eventually you take that, you can then go back to a high block or, or you just take a high block on the outside of your foot, that's fine. So I'm giving you permission to experiment and play. Final pose, floor on the outside of your foot. Lift the outer knees to the outer hips, lengthen the groins. Extend your left arm up. Press into the back heel, reach up, reach up, reach up. Compact the hips, lengthen the groins as you extend forward. Extend, 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 extend. Extend through the side ribs. Push the arm forward and then pull the arm forward and then take the hand onto the block. Now keep that right hip moving back. Now, the first time around I said, Turn the abdomen. Now that, that's the way I've been taught it the most, turn the abdomen. But I have been taught many times also, 
rotate the shoulders. So turn, but just as, as when we're doing the sitting twist, we played with turning the abdomen, turning at the ribs, turning the shoulders, turn at the shoulders, rotate the shoulders, take that, that top shoulder, that right shoulder back, lift the outer knees to the outer hips still, don't lose that, outer knees to outer hips, lengthen the groins. Take your right shoulder back, take your left shoulder blade into the body. Don't do a back bend. Don't turn it into a back bend. So the spine is still a straight line. It's parallel to the front and back walls. Don't lose that. And take your right shoulder back, left shoulder blade forward. If you'd like, you can extend your arm up and find your Shavasana now. Yes, even those who are falling, find your Shavasana. This is a complex pose. This is a very hard pose. Take your hand on your hip if it's up, press into your back heel. That hand is on the block, swing it up and out. Parallel your feet, over to the other side. Right foot and left leg out, hands on hips. Pick up the back heel, place, square the hips and place that heel down. Take that block, however you had it. So if you're doing the high block on the inside of your foot, do that. If you either lower the block or moved it to the outside of your foot, do that. No judgment here, experiment. Now compact the hips together, outer knees to outer hips. Lengthen the inner groins, inner knees to the lower abdomen, extend the right arm. Press the back heel, reach up. Compact those hips as you go forward. Lengthen the groins as you go forward. Extending, use the side ribs to lengthen, lengthen the spine, use the side ribs to push that arm forward, and then pull the arm forward and take the fingertips on that block. Take that left hip back. Take that left hip back as you extend the spine. And then use the shoulders this time. Rotate. The rest of the torso follows. I'm not saying don't turn the abdomen. Keep your spine parallel to the front and back walls. Don't turn it into a back bend or a forward bend. And rotate. Take your left shoulder back. Take your right shoulder blade into the body. Use your right shoulder blade to move forward as the left shoulder comes back. So can you use that action of the right shoulder blade to take that left shoulder back? And can you notice how different this side is? And then feel free to extend your arm up if you want. And then can you find your Shavasana while maintaining this work? Take your hand onto your hip, back heel, hand on the block. Use that hand on the block, swing yourself up and out. Parallel your feet and step your feet together. Jonathan, I have a question. Yes, question. Um, in order to do this and not completely fall over, I have to separate my feet so they're not in an even plane. Would it be better to use like a chair and go up higher or which is- Both, are, both of us, so she's asking about falling. Um, to be clear, I'm amazed watching everyone here. I get jealous because it took me about two years of practicing this pose not to fall out of this pose. But that's just to share with you. It's, it, it's a complex pose. Uh, yes, if, if you need, you can. It's heel to arch alignment, but if you need, you, you take the front foot off to one side, the back foot off to the other side. Uh, you can do that. Yes, she, so she asked about the alignment of the feet. So yes, you can make the feet wider, uh, left and right wider. You can also take a higher lift, a chair instead of the blocks can definitely help with that as well. As I might practice, um, not, not today, not right now, but take your back heel against a wall and press your back heel into the wall. And that may bring stability. Does that help? Where'd you go? Yes, thank you. I appreciate uh, it. You are welcome. Tadasana, shin bones forward, thighs back. Lift the outer knees to the outer hips, compact the hips together, lengthen those, those inner thighs from the inner knees to the lower abdomen. Lift up to the side ribs. 
Release the shoulders. Observe here. Even in Tadasana, can you maintain the work of, of Tadasana? It's one of the most complex poses. Can you maintain the work and find your Shavasana in Tadasana? It means the eyes look outward and inward at the same time. That's helpful. So imagine you're gazing at an imaginary horizon way off in the distance. But you're also looking inward at the same time. And release. All right, so this next one. We're gonna, some people are gonna do it. One, we'll all do it the same way the first time. And then some people do it one way and another. I'll show you a couple ways the second time. Separate your feet nice and wide. Prasarita Parottanasana. Um, you wanna make sure your heels are aligned. So I usually use the edge of the mat because when your, your feet are, are this wide apart, um, often you, you can't really tell if they're on the same plane. So I use the back of the mat and make sure my feet are there. I should have mentioned blocks. Take your blocks in front of you. Press your thighs back. Lift the outer knees to the outer hips, compact the hips. So I'm just looking in the room here. So it might be similar there. There are two tendencies here. One is, and sometimes we even instruct this, but we'll say press into the outer foot. So yes, that's correct. But sometimes we push the ankles out when we do that. And then sometimes we end up falling into the inner foot and then the ankles drop in. So for today, can you have an evenness on the inner and outer foot? And then on both feet. So equal weight on each foot. That's its own journey. And then even it's on the inner foot and outer foot of each foot. Wow, I could spend the next hour just doing that. And then building up from there, the ankles, see that your ankles are not pushing out and they're not dropping in. Because that's going to affect your knees, your hips, and and your shoulders and all of it, right? Now from there, you do have to press your thigh bones back, lift the outer knees to the outer hips and lengthen the inner groins. Keep the front bottom ribs moving towards the back body. We're going into a forward bend, but it, it, it actually starts with a back, a slight back bend. So elbows back, keep the thighs pressing back when you do this. Do not throw the thighs and hips forward and inhale and begin to arch your chest towards the ceiling. The kidneys come in but don't thrust the front ribs forward and don't push the thighs forward. Inhale, and then on your exhalation, keep the thighs pressing back, but don't throw the hips back. Hips in line with your heels, hips in line with your heels and extend the chest forward and then take your fingertips onto the blocks. You pick the height, shoulder blades into the bottom. Still lift the outer knees to the outer hips. Um, separate your hands further apart, Sean. So, so uh, your hands should be underneath your shoulders. And if you have tight shoulders, you know, you're better off a, a little bit wider, although I lose balance there. So underneath the, the shoulders, don't, don't have them in towards each other. Do rotate the upper arms out to make space for the side ribs. And then as you press the, th the thighs back, extend the side ribs forward. Try and get your side ribs past your armpits. Extend, we're not there yet, Leanne. Straight arms. Extend from your pubic bone to navel, navel to sternum, sternum to collarbone, that flesh still going over the front of your spine. And then at the energy rolls over your shoulders, your shoulder blades, Ramona, are popping out. I would take either come onto your fingertips or take a higher lift. That's it. Now bring those shoulder blades in. Use the shoulder blades to extend the chest forward. And the flesh of the front of the body moves up, the flesh of the back of the body moves down. And then coming out, just heel toe your feet together a little bit, and then hands on hips, then inhale, come up. And then just walk your feet together. You can jump your feet together if you want, that's fine. I've done a little too much jumping today, so I'm walking, but you're welcome to jump your feet together, but we all, here's, we all have to listen to our bodies. 
All right, so here are the options for part two. We're gonna still start off here, wide stance, thighs back, come up, and then we'll come down. We'll, we'll all start here and we'll be here for a moment. And then, so either you can come down, your hands go between your feet. So not here anymore. You take your hands back, you round your back, and that floor is not touching my head. So I have to do something. So I'll take a block and I'll give instructions from there. But some of that, and yes, you can use the high block too, but sometimes that version doesn't feel so good if you can't get down far enough. So there's this beautiful version, which you know, we don't teach enough, but it really is lovely. You take a block, a, 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 a chair, a chair in front of you. You take your forearms on the chair and you just rest your head here. Now you still have to do, do the work. Thighs back, outer knees to outer hips, lengthen the groins, and to make sure everybody at home can kind of see from what it is from the side. So you're here. All right. So take a chair or your block, or if you're not sure, just have it all nearby, right? Have, have your stuff nearby. Sometimes I don't know what I need until I get into it. Separate your feet. Out, so first the feet, right? So inner and outer foot, both feet, ankles, not falling in, not pushing out. Outer knees to outer hips, lifting from the inner knees to the, the, the lower abdomen, thighs back, hands on hips, elbows back. Now ribs in and thighs back as you begin to look up, the chest points towards the ceiling. Now maintain that thighs back, but don't throw the hips back as you come forward. And take your hands on the block. If you're using the chair, you can just go straight to forearms on the chair, that's fine. Now check your feet again, inner and outer foot, even balance. Ankle squared, no toes gripping for anyone. Extend the front of the torso forward, shoulder blades into the body. And then if you're coming down, inhale, exhale, round the back, hands between your feet, and then head on something, floor, blankets, blocks, or your forearms are on the chair. And head resting either on the chair or on your forearms. Now, for those with hands on the floor, hands are between your feet. Take your elbows in line with your shoulders. The back of the head for everybody moves away from the shoulders. The back of the head away from the shoulders. And those whose hands are on the floor, press your hands into the floor and lift the shoulders away from your ears. Lift, lift the shoulders, lift, lift, lift. Still. Balance evenly on the feet, inner and outer feet, outer knees to outer hips, lengthen the groins. Those whose heads are, are on the floor or on a surface, the head should really be resting. The back of the head moving down, you're a little, not um, towards the forehead, but you're closer to the back of the head. Good, the end, that was good. Now keep lifting the shoulders. So everyone should have their head supported on something, either the chair or the floor or a prop on the floor. And then those whose hands are on the floor, walk your hands forward and strain your arms, look up, concave back. Shoulder blades in, don't sink in that lower back, Leanne. The front rod and roots still move back even, in, even when you do this. And then everybody heel toe your feet together just a little bit. And then hands on hips, extend the chest forward, chest towards the ceiling, thighs back, ribs in as you pull the chest towards the ceiling. And then come to center and then jump or step your feet together. Tadasana. Have a seat. 
I'm using the same lift I had earlier. So I'm using my block here. We're doing Murchiasana one and Murchiasana three. Again, we did them earlier, we're gonna do them again. Why? Because we did a whole bunch of poses in between. And I wanna know if they feel the same. Dandasana. Hold behind your left leg, lift it up, draw it in, hold the ankle, place the heel down, hands around your shin, lift. Straight leg, toes up, kneecap up, lengthen the inner groin, draw the outer knee to the outer hip. Keep that leg, that, that, that straight leg working. Backhand go, the, sorry, backhand, right hand goes behind you, becomes the backhand. Left arm up, now sit into that left sit bone, reach up, inhale, exhale, turn, bend the elbow. Then inhale, lifting, exhale, turning. Take that left shoulder blade into the body. Keep that right, uh, yeah, right leg working. That's it, good, Sean. Press into the inner bent leg, press into the inner foot of the bent leg and sit into that left sit bone. Take that left shoulder blade into the body. Is it the same as before or is it different? Try not to lean so far back, Sean, and keep that spine as upright as is comfortable and accessible today. Now find your Shavasana in the pose. Don't give up, don't give up the pose. Maintain and find your Shavasana. Fingers are a part of the pose, by the way. Fingers extending. And exhale, come to center, keep that lift. Hands around the shin, lift. Hands behind the knee, draw the flesh towards the buttock, straighten the leg. Hold behind the other knee, lift up. Take the ankle, place it down. Hands around the shin, lift. Straight leg, kneecap up, toes up, lengthen the inner groins. Draw the outer knee to the outer hip, compact the hip. Take the left hand behind you, right arm up. Sit into that right sit bone. Extend up, reach up, inhale, exhale, turn. Keep that straight leg working. Sit into that, that right sit bone. Press into the inner right foot. Inhale, lifting, exhale, turning. Take that right shoulder blade into the body. Lift the chest in. Take that chest, chest, chest. Use that shoulder blade to the help lift the chest. That right shoulder blade goes in and up. Imagine I had my hand on the front of your right armpit, Leanne. And uh, so it's between your, your, your breast and, and the upper arm and I'm lifting it up, yep, yeah, and I'm lifting it. No, up, 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 that's down, up, yeah, ah. How does that feel? That one. I mean, there is a version where we do that, but, but even once you're there, then you still have to get that lift Maintain that lift, inhale, exhale, come to center, hands around the shin, go behind the knee, draw the flesh towards the buttocks, straighten the leg. All right, let's see, okay, watch. So you're gonna do this again. When you take, you'll do, you'll do the extended, when you take this over, there's a tendency to collapse here. So I want you to imagine, right, so back armpit, front armpit, what I'm calling it. And I want you to imagine that I have my hand here. So arm, armpit, chest. I have my hand here and I'm lifting it up. So I'm not here collapsing, but I'm lifting it up. And some of you have been here when we could do adjustments, one day we'll do them again, but I take my hand inside your armpit and I'd lift up while bringing that shoulder blade in. So the shoulder blade comes in and that armpit's lift armpit lifts. So I want you to do that together, okay? So bend your left leg in. Right hand back, left arm up. Press into, into the sit bone, extend up, reach up, inhale, exhale, turn. And now take that, you, your shoulder blade too. So take your left shoulder blade in, 
take the armpit, left arm, back armpit to front armpit. And imagine my hand is there or someone's hand is there and they're lifting that front of the armpit up, lifting the front of the armpit of your left armpit up. And then turn. Don't forget that straight front leg. Don't give up the leg just to get the chest lifted. Maintain that, inhale, exhale, come to center. Hands around the shin, lift. Hands behind the leg, straighten the leg. Other side, last one. Shavasana is coming up. Hands around the shin, lift. Right hand behind you. Or left hand behind you, sorry. Right arm up. Sit into the sit bone, lengthen. Inhale, exhale, bend. But don't collapse. So take that right shoulder blade into the body. Take the, the back right armpit towards the front right armpit. And someone has their hand right at that armpit. And they're lifting it up. Lifting it up. Pulling from the back armpit to the front armpit. Lifting it up. Use that. Inhale, lift. That, you had it, show. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. Inhale, lift. Exhale, turn. Sit into that right sit bone. Press into the right inner foot. Now find your Shavasana. And then exhale, come to center, hands around your shin, lift, hands behind your leg, draw the flesh towards the buttock, straighten your leg. Dandasana. Find your Shavasana here. And release, lie back, set yourself up for Shavasana. Start, lie, start with your legs bent, bend your legs into your chest for a moment, just to, to release anything. So lie back, bend your legs into your chest. Just give yourself a little hug here. Give yourself a little hug. Say something kind to yourself. We've done a lot of work today. Hopefully within the work, you have been able to practice or experience some Shavasana. So begin to bring yourself to a Shavasana awareness here. On your inhalation, take your feet to the floor. Scoop the flesh of your buttocks towards your heels. Straighten your legs one at a time. Let your legs go, arms out to the sides, palms up. Let go. Let your legs release. Let your arms release. Let your face release. Let your skull rest. Tongue resting, jaw releasing. Let go. And as you begin to aim your awareness at your breath, the breath breathing you, as you aim your awareness at your breath, can you begin to find, can you begin to sense the Shavasana in your Shavasana?
Take a soft, smooth, peaceful inhalation. And a longer, smooth, peaceful exhalation. Wiggle your toes, wiggle your nose. Bend your legs, place your feet on the floor with your knees together and your feet apart and take your hands and place them onto your abdomen or onto your chest. Let the healing energy of your hands pierce through your layers, penetrate your body and heal whatever it is you may need healing with today. You feel ready, extend your right arm past your right ear, roll to the right, or if you prefer the left side, then your left arm past your left ear, roll to the left. Rest your right ear, rest your ear into your upper arm. So your arm is supporting your head. Whenever you feel ready, turn your torso towards the floor first. Use your top hand, push into the floor, push up, come up to sitting. Cross your legs the opposite way you had them. Bring your palms together. Notice the effort it takes to sit upright. And can you find your Shavasana alongside the effort? Taking a moment to observe your practice. What is it from this practice that you want to take with you out into the world? Can you embed that into your cells, into your heart and take that with you? Let's close by chanting the syllable on one time together. Deep inhalation. Oh. eyes open, big smile, namaste, bow to the divine within you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everybody here. Thank you, everybody coming from home. Grateful for all of you. Thank you, Jonathan. Great class.